Four miles west of the town of Wooler, there are two fascinating sites of Northumbrian history. Ad Geffren is one of the most important archaeological sites in early medieval Britain. There's been a settlement here since the Bronze Age, about 5,000 years ago. The real importance of Ad Geffren began in the 6th century, when the newly established Anglo-Saxon kings of Northumbria built a royal residence here. This included the Great Hall, some 80 feet in length, alongside several Gruben House, like this one located at Jarrow Hall. These buildings may have been residential, although recent theories suggest they were more likely to be industrial in nature. There was even an amphitheatre-style building, with tiered seating that could accommodate up to 320 people. This was a very unique building in Britain at the time, and is thought to have been used for audiences with the Northumbrian king. By the 8th century AD, Geffren was no more, and for over a thousand years the site was lost. It was only rediscovered in 1949 when aerial photography revealed the outlines of some of its buildings. Towering over Ad Geffren is Northumberland's largest hill fort, Yeavering Bell. This would be camp spot for the night. Yeavering Bell was a stronghold in a prominent position at the edge of the Cheviot Hills. The site dates from the late Bronze Age and into the Iron Age before being abandoned in the first century BC. When the site was at its peak, there were 130 houses within its four metre wide stone ramparts, which still survive today. There's also the remains of a burial cairn, which indicate that the hill was in use as far back as the Neolithic period. The walk up to Yeaver and Bell is short, so this was the perfect opportunity for my dog Bert to join me. Bert used to come camping all of the time, but he's getting on a bit now, and he can't manage the longer walks anymore, so it was nice to have him along on this one. Although it's a short walk, it gets very steep very quickly. Difficult with a heavy pack on. The views from the top are stunning. The Cheviot Hills to the south, the sea to the east. As we arrived at the top, rain clouds could be seen to the south, giving the Cheviot a good soaking. I thought I'd better get the tent up quick, just in case. Rain did get us in the end, but it wasn't long before we could dive inside the tent for a bit of shelter.
Bert explored the remains of the fort between rain showers, and we took the opportunity to get some food in us when the weather really closed in. a new bit of kit to try on this trip, a new sleeping mat, the Big Agnes Insulated Air Core Ultra. This mat is much thicker and warmer than the Thermarest I've used previously, and I was hoping that this extra thickness would give a more comfortable night's sleep. As it turned out, this would be possibly the best night's sleep I've ever had in a tent, so a big thumbs up for my first impressions. forecast overnight was for the wind and showers to die off and for an overcast morning with pretty much no wind and temperatures hovering around 2 or 3 degrees. I woke up at about quarter past 5 to see if I could catch the sunrise and I'm pleased I did. It was fleeting, only lasting a few minutes but it was spectacular. The calm weather that had been forecast had obviously not got the memo. Instead, there was a fiercely cold wind blowing. To add to that, the wind had changed direction and was now blowing straight into the front of my tent. Luckily, I had brought the Snugpack Scorpion 3, a semi-geodesic tent that has stood up to some pretty extreme conditions over the years and has been bomb-proof. It's a very good tent for exposed and windy locations and the fact that it's semi-geodesic means that it can be used when I'm out sea kayaking and can't always guarantee that I'll be able to stake the tent out properly.
After breakfast, there was the challenge and task of packing the tent away in the wind. This isn't as bad as it seems. You just have to be very mindful that anything you put down will blow away, unless it's secured or has something weirdly put on it. A bit of experience also helps. Yverin Bell is well worth the short but steep walk up. The views are fantastic and there is just something about being stood in what was once the biggest stronghold in Iron Age Northumberland. 